Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jaji from the Sustainable Environmental Design Program. Um, today, I'm very glad to in, um, have the opportunity to introduce my MARC dissertation to you. Um, the topic of my dissertation is permeable city, uh, reuse of high density residential building with integration of memorial space. So th this design project is based on the research on an existing residential building in Hong Kong named the Chongqing Mansions, which is famous for its complexity and its self-sufficiency. This building is often seen as a representative of Hong Kong's low rent housing, um, which experiences is issues such as high density of occupants, um, safety issues, low energy efficiency, and most importantly, very poor living conditions. So, and on a bigger scale, this building is also an uh, epitome of Hong Kong, uh, just like other major cities in the tropical. Hong Kong is facing the challenges of um, economic crisis, energy crisis, high urban density, as well as a uh, burial crisis. So the goal of this project is to explore the pos possibility of a prototype of an affordable housing, which combines the residential space, commercial space, and cemetery space at the same time. And it, could, it should also give dignity to low-income residents by providing them with good living environments. Um, and the building, and, the, and as well as the potential of uh, the pat passive design strategies that makes the building operate in a sustainable way. So, so this design research starts with analytical studies on the um, environmental, spatial, and cultural aspects of this existing building. Historically, uh, Chongqing Mansions is a mega structure reinforced concrete complex um, developed in the 1960s. It was originally designed into two parts the commercial space in the podium, which is the yellow part in the picture, and um, the high-rising tower, residential towers, which are the red, blue, and the green. Um, uh, although it was um, initially designed as residential uh, project, however, um, nowadays due to the lack of management, the boundary between the residential part and commercial part um, has blurred. Um, and many units are expanded and ex extra rooms are added um, and they are rent out to the young workers and tra tra traders. So some of these rooms even have no connection to the external. And also the volume of the building compared to the exposed surface is too massive, which results in a very poor efficiency in ventilation. Um, the existing air shaft, as we can see on the picture, is very much contaminated. Um, this is by the, um, the commercial units in the podium, and as well, uh, and also because the contaminations cannot be taken away by flowing wind. So the base, um, based on the research of the building, the most critical issues, like lack of daylight and ventilation, poor circulation, chaotic <coughs> programs, are addressed. So this diagram shown here is the design agenda of this project. So the, basically the design approach of this project is building form driven and technical study supported. So the, a building form that is good for ventilation and daylight is placed in the top priority as they are essential to the occupant's health, health conditions. Um, and then follows by um, circulation, view, and commu communal spaces as they give awareness, chance of communication, and activity space to the occupancy, which is ex essential to achieve um, psychological health. Um, also other spatial qualities such as security or um, noise-free are raised, um, how, uh, although they are in a relatively lower priority. So, the base um, reuse, reuse strategy is to reuse the existing um, superstructure, change the shape of the slabs, and improve the uh, facade fabric. So in order to find an optimized building form that maximizes the air movement inside the stru structure, um, I created a CFD wind tunnel model to test different carving strategies and their combinations. So the main c uh, criteria here is to find a higher wind velocity in the building and more controllable wind flow patterns, as well as a 
a certain wind pressure on the building facade, which directly influences the natural ventilation rates. So after three generations of iterations, so the initial building form scenario that op optimized uh, the natural ventilation is illustrated here. And then I did a cup of geometric an, an analysis on the solar accessibility to find a, out a way of letting more sunlight enter the deep dark atrium area. And finally, the building, uh, the initial building form was confirmed. So this building shows the wind trace from CFD simulations. I tested two different wind directions, the east and the south, which are uh, predominant wind directions in Hong Kong, and I found that uh, the, surrounding uh, the surrounding buildings are um, making all the wind come from the same direction from the southeast and northeast corner, and it goes all the way smoothly to the west side of the building. And it could always reach to um, half of the velocity of the um, original airflow in the, in the building. And historical weather data shows that the average wind speed in Hong Kong is 3.3 meters per second, which means I can easily get 1.6 meters per second in average in the building, which could also reduce the operative temperature of the human body for about 2.5 degrees. So uh, the result also shows that, the, that uh, manipulating the wind flow in the building does not only benefit the units, but also brings um, a breath to the pedestrian level on the other side. And, and this diagram shows the vertical layout of the units. So basically to ensure that every unit have um, the opportunity to get cross ventilation, the floor layout is designed as um, a single corridor layout. And the air shaft works also to assure that there are still natural ventilation driven by uh, thermal buoyancy on calm days. Um, also, most of the units will have direct sunlight from spring to autumn. And uh, in summer, the daylight could reach the bottom of the building. So basically, the units are in average 10 meters deep uh, with the floor to ceiling height of 2.6 meters. So to ensure the efficiency of cross ventilation, each unit is given a balcony of uh, approximately 1.5 meters um, to make sure that the ratio is of depth to um, ceiling floor height is below four. So. Also, the fabric of the building is also um, carefully designed with a U value of 0.4, which is good. And I also designed a dynamic glazing system. It came f the idea came from the um, vernacular Japanese sliding doors. So it it's, uh, consists of low, low emission double glazing and a polycarbonate panel, um, which both of which have very low U values and they perform well in terms of blocking the sunlight. So here are some scenarios illustrated to show some of the possible um, adaptive behaviors. Uh, for example, you can use the balcony on a sunny spring day, which makes you comfortable, or you can, um, you can only open the bottom of the windows to let the sun in, but without losing too much warm air in winter. And you can also move the opaque panels, the uh, polycarbonate panels to the middle and so that you can ventilate, you can ventilate the top and the bottom. So um, also um, thermodynamic uh, simulations are conducted to assess the performance of this unit. So here is a typical unit um, tested for extreme cold winter weeks and as well as extreme hot week, uh, summer weeks. So in winter, it performs well. It's, um, for most of time, it's within the comfort band. And um, compared to the original heating load, uh, we can say the heating load is fully um, eliminated, eliminated here. And when it comes to summer, um, it's also two degrees um, cooler than the base case, but there are still extreme cases when the temperature could reach about 32 um, degrees. And of course, the uh, cooling load is very much reduced. So in the case of extreme hot waves, um, the building provides three levels of um, adaptive behavior 
opportunities. The first one on the rooftop garden is the most ex exposed one, and um, protect one in the middle, which is the urban green walk, and the memorial garden in the podium is the most enclosed one. Um, so here is the um, illustration of the podium space. So here it is very well protected, and the thermal mass in this area provides extra cooling effect. And on extreme hot days, this place provides a shelter for the occupancies from the heat waves. It gathers people together to have communications, to meditate, and to commemorate their loved ones. So um, in conclusion, this design project explored the possibility of high density housing in tropical cities like Hong Kong. And by designing with a ventilation driven form, um, both physical and psychological qualities are uh, um, assured. Although there are still details that need to be um, improved, the project shows the potential of a prototype that gives good living conditions and do not conflict with the low end housing. Um, and also future studies could be done to investigate, investigate the ventilation driven design approach in an urban scale, especially in its function in changing the wind flow pattern uh, in the whole area and its improvement to both internal of the buildings and the public spaces between the buildings. That's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Jing Xu and my, I'm glad to share my dissertation project from Factory to Shine Adaptive Reviews of Cylindrical Concrete Building into a Multipurpose Spiritual Space in Shenzhen. So first, the introduction about my site factory building, what it is, and my uh, climate analyze about Shenzhen. So my site located in Shenzhen, but actually it's more closer to Hong Kong and it's more far away from the Shenzhen city center. And then as we can see for the brief climate data analyze here, uh, it divided by four different seasons, especially in spring, it's a rainy season. And with the average humidity with around 91%, and also that like we can see, because Shenzhen is a humid subtropical climate with the average yearly temperature only around 23 degrees, and then even in the winter, the average uh, dry, bulb dry bulb temperature is around 50 degrees. It means that it's a really affordable and warm climate during the whole year. And also because of the rainy season, we're to more uh, looking forward into the sky covered uh, presentage during the whole year. So during the whole year, there's more around 30% of the year will be uh, uh, overcast and especially in spring and the summer when it's the rainy season. So here, this is my uh, site uh, selection. It's a value factory and I select, select the, uh, the tallest tower uh, with the four cylinder concrete building in this factory. So it was used uh, before by a glass produced factory, but now it's used uh, as a museum and for or gallery for the tour tourist and the citizen. So here by the basic observation here that we can see it at first in the f these four cylinders, there's no window at all. And this is also a issue of waste, wasting of the good outdoor environment and the good sea view. And also um, when we check the buildings around it, uh, when they have the similar problem is uh, when they have the extra window here, actually it just bring out more overheating in the summer for asking for the additional uh, air AC and also with a um, really thick 400 millimeter concrete wall exposed and also exposed concrete ceiling and floor. So after I introduce my factory, so what is shine? So the shine, the concept of shine is original come from original tr traditional uh, Chinese family sh temple shrines. It's a place that a uh, family will have some spiritual activities and also with the function with spiritual pace and also the housing and department. But nowadays they're more using as a museum and civic center. But nowadays our modern shine is more just a spiritual place with symbolic meanings about the shrine is not really a religious space, but with more experimental and dramatic experience in this kind of a building. 
So for here, I try to bring the shrine concept in this factory. So let's go into the uh, architectural design development. So here we can see from the section, uh, the building is made by three big hollow cylinder here. And then at the beginning, I div because it's really deep cylinder, uh, the height about the cylinder is around 34 meters. And then first I adding additional floor step to create some more usable uh, spaces for the different function that I need to design. And then I insert the shine area in the middle and then create two individual circulation area to the both side because the uh, original building is around 68 meters less. So you have to be have um, two different circulation spaces for the fire safety. And then after, um, after I after I concerned about the shine and then also I uh, it will bring out the direct daylight access to the building, create the cement indoor and outdoor space, and also prove a stack ventilation to the floor area that attached to the shrine. So here, this is more a uh, multi-zone planning uh, about uh, the additional planning about the uh, the whole building, and we can see here uh, the hotel is now is more be separated by the shrine here. But in the end, I wanted to uh, zoom in, the, zoom out the concept of the shrine more to create a more stronger spiritual spaces. So at first, I move it uh, to the other side and then I create an individual circulation area for the shrine pool and then also the meditation spaces. And in the end, because I want to have some vertical segregation for the public spaces and also for the uh, accommodation spaces. So in the end, I just uh, choose um, choose two cylinders to, as a hotel spaces and the rest of two cylinders there as a circular staircase shrine for the public and also more private shrine put for the hotel residents here. And this is uh, different uh, environmental references about the daylight, about different places. Because from here, we can see the shrine put and the meditation spaces. They're also for the spiritual spaces. So their daylight references will be different from the normal hotel room and also for some public area like rooftop bar and restaurant. So this is about the atrium design, or also the shrine design development here. First, uh, why I choosing this form? Because uh, I test the different size of window opening on the top here, and then and with different angle, and then let's check by radiance uh, the luminance level here. So the ideal luminance level here just allow the people have some activity without any uh, glare and also to prove some uh, enough of daylight without any stress. So, but in because of this is a spiritual basis, so it shouldn't be um, too bright, like usual, like a hotel room. So I, the ideal, um, plan here after selected, it will be these two different four and then with around 100 to 300 lux in this uh, shine area. And also after this, because uh, except the raining season here, the uh, window on the top is always open. So I text about the microclimate maps about here, showing it's still also in the comfort zone. Even it have some heat sensation, but remember it because this is a shrine swimming pool, so people in the water will always feel comfortable in it. And this is some image about different time, uh, different in one day, different time and people what they feel like in the shrine. So this uh, dramatic rainbow uh, light affection is from the prison. So I add a prison in, in the shrine area to create the more dramatic spaces and experience for the visitors. So this is in the morning, and then in the noon time is more diffuse daylight, and then in the afternoon and uh, at night. And now we are going to the public shrine area development. So for the public shrine area, because the public shrine is more closer to the ground floor and then they have the sound shelf shading by the other buildings around it here. So I analyzed the solar irradiation in summer and winter and the extra one of the picture in it and try to have the bigger, uh, try to decide my window opening here by parametric design image attractor. So of course, in the lower solar radiation, I want to have a more window opening here. So I select a larger window opening. But because of on the floor plan, um, we have six huge column on in the floor plan. So I have to avoid this floor uh, 
I don't want to demolish all of the columns, so I just decided to delete some of the uh, window opening area. And also we can see here, because the window opening, there are quite different sizes, so how should I deal with this? So in the end, I choose the concrete, ventilation concrete block for the different window opening, and also is a reuse about the concrete that I demolished from the original building. So from here, I have uh, some CFD analyze here that we can see when you are not standing next to the uh, ventilation block area, you will only uh, lightly feel the breeze in, on your skin. But when you stand into the uh, window area, you will feel around uh, 1.5 to 2 uh, meters per second, and then you will feel the wind breeze on your skin. So from here, and also I test about the um, uh, thermal comfort in the opening area and also because uh, initially this uh, ventilation concrete box is without any glasses here so I test and so of course there will have some significant different in the sum in the winter not really significant different in the summer so I find out that of course uh, in the winter it's better with the glasses here but as I said we only have one extremely cold week and like this but still and the rest of time they're still in comfort band. So I, in the end, I still choose into without any glasses, just using the um, pure concrete ventilation block. So this is the one of the image of the concrete uh, ventilation block, what it looked like from the outside. And then this is the interior renderings. So from here, like, we're looking forward more into the floor plan. So the floor plan after this, so it will have some hotel room insert and also some shrine area. So the blue area is the original structure, and then the new black walls is the structure that I added for. So from here, we can see the hotel that will have individual uh, circulation for hotel and also individual circulation for the public shrine, and as well as in the private shrine and also the meditation spaces. So from the hotel room, uh, the scenario here is um, because the disadvantage, we have a really big column in the hotel room. So I use it as a shading device and then to decrease the thermal stress and also the overheating in the, su in the summer. So we can see here in the end from the energy demand, if it come from uh, the cooling demand start with 37 without any sh shading strategy and then in the end we only achieve we only about achieve 8.1 kilowatt hour per square meter and this is two different strategy for the hotel roof floor plan and using the same uh, scenario about the shading demands at the using the column as a balcony shade and also shading the all the window openings here and also in the end, this is the, the daylight study about to text because the window opening, it seems like it's not really big on the floor plan and just text, is it enough of daylight in, during the year by daylight autonomy? And, and then we can see most of the area, the main area about building, uh, about people's activity, they're all around more than 80% of more than 300 lux over the year. Yeah, and this is in the end what the buildings look like. And that's all. Okay. You both addressed um, you both addressed high levels of complexity, both contextual and in terms of the brief. It's really commendable. But firstly, how well you've taken this this challenge. <coughs> Um, contextually, we have here environments that have great difficulties as they are, buildings as it is, and whichever way it might be modified. And then on top of this, uh, you took on additional programs, um, programs which in themselves are both new in a way, in any case new for us to, to handle and for you, and sought both performance and what I would call ambience, atmosphere, architectural atmosphere, and, and, and in fact succeeding very well. Well, based on what you have shown and based on how quickly the slides uh, have been presented. 
I mean, I, um, I was really impressed. Um, and uh, I want to thank you very much for, for doing that. Now, um, Jewish, the, the adaptive opportunities, yes, they, very good. It, it would have been good to be able to see them, to illustrate them a bit more, to see them uh, in, in a more dynamic way, because th this is what they are. They are, they are a dynamic. Um, th there they just became a little ma matrix. So it would be nice to, to see that. Maybe you've done it in the dissertation, maybe then you can do it in the future. I think both of your dissertations could have publishable material. Um, well, but we'll see what um, Jorge has to say about the, the CFT that you have applied very generously. Um, but even if, let's say, the, uh, the complexity of it might not be completely refined, I think uh, the fact that you have taken it as a challenge and the fact that you have shown that variations in the parameters lead to variations in the form, and then you control the form and you control the wind flow, well, that, 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 that is what we would like to have. That is what you're giving. Uh, and I think the same applies to Chink with her exploration of daylight and refinements there using the full power of the Radiance uh, software. Um, <clears throat> and I think I should stop here. That I, I do have a very small question, Joyce, about uh, yes. those U values of the glazing system because um, they, yeah. the properties you've given to that glazing, a twin wall polycarbonate, um, do not match the kind of uh, numbers that I have in my in my head. It it seems I mean twin more polycarbonate in its basic is just do, as double glazing in terms of U value and perhaps also in terms of uh, light transmission maybe less than double glazing in terms of the light transmission. So how it turns up there to have uh, such a low U value. And, well, maybe you have an answer. But let us know. Whereas, on the other hand, Jing's um, concrete, 400 millimeter concrete, ends up with uh, very high U values, which in fact make it very difficult to lower the temperatures beyond a certain level, because it's it's a thick plank of concrete and uh, stabilizes the temperature and, and, and it seems in some of your runs it seems like it's stabilizing them at, but, but at a relatively high temperature or relatively higher than what we would have liked. So I'll stop here and uh, ask my colleagues to uh, Hello, thank you for your presentations. I agree that um, you tackle complex challenges and in both cases aiming to retrofit existing structures, introducing these new functions and, and integrating these different uses that apparently they tended very often to be separated farther and farther away in the city. And, and bringing qualities, special qualities to all these spaces. So I think one of the in, most interesting parts of these uh, studies is that uh, it was not um, only looking into um, comfort or reducing energy demand or, or, or optimizing the performance, but also balancing the quality of the design and the quality of the experience the spaces could provide, especially on this special places with a great symbolic value like the memorial or the shrine and it's interesting that in both cases you were introducing this senatorial light um, uh, and it was a challenge in such a dense urban context to keep this gap in the building so that the, the daylight could, and the sky could be perceived as a a symbolic element in, in, in these spaces and how the whole building is, well, partly um, 
working to, to allow that and it's shaping a way that it, allow, it allows that. It, 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 it is also combined and, and balanced with the permeability that is uh, really identified what was one of the key parameters for the um, performing part. And so I think in a way these spatial and, and performative aspects are much in in these buildings, I, and I think they are good examples of, of how to to integrate the the most technical and analytical part with objectives and and, and qualitative objectives and 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 architectural design the architectural design process. I think the particularly uh, well in both cases. The, the existing shape of, of the buildings was a, a very important constraint. So in, in a way, it was a challenge, but at the same time, it helped narrowing down the problem. So instead of having limitless options, it, it constrained the possible solutions. And I think perhaps that also was uh, something that to, to be taken into account, that having many constraints is not always uh, a problem, but perhaps it's uh, an opportunity to focus on uh, and become more uh, focused and, and concise on the elements that you want to, to explore and therefore going further and exploring them further mm. and, and managing to, to shape a high quality space and, and also support this design with um, thorough uh, analytic work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I also uh, like both of your projects very much because you, you took this very difficult challenge. First, you have a climate where ventilation is really needed, but on the other hand, you're dealing with a typology which, need, which um, reflects high density, and so the high density and ventilation um, can very often be a conflicting thing. So it was really interesting to see how both of you manage this. In, in addition, I also, uh, like George said, uh, I liked e the fact that both of you tried to bring into this, um, well, I, I could say both are residential, one is temporary, the other one is permanent. Uh, this other aspect, which is the spiritual or memorial space. Um, another thing is, again, uh, this, the refurbishment, the existing structure, uh, and, and then you explored with some creativity and imagination. Let's not go into details on what is the, where did all this concrete that you open up go. That, that was not the main purpose, so it was also to allow you to explore some design uh, challenges uh, and, and, and make it more creatively. I think that in, in case of um, Jing, you, you, you explore more the daylighting aspects yes. because they were more um, important uh, than in, in Diaji's case. And um, yeah, I, I, I think maybe what I would like to challenge uh, would be both of your projects are quite um, inward, like the context was not very much taken into account, although you almost created um, a self-sufficient um, uh, in habitation, more in, in Diage's case, where I think you also included commercial and, and shops. But I, I, I would like to ask you, what, what would be the way that you, you think you could attract um, people, residents, to come both either to your memorial or, or shrine space or uh, you know, the ones inhabiting there to explore also the most closed neighborhood. If you want to say something. Uh, should I start first? So um, just as I mentioned in the beginning, so Hong Kong is experiencing both the housing crisis and the cemetery crisis. So my um, initial idea was to 
bring the um, memorial space into the building so that both the residents in the building as well as um, people in the neighborhood could use the memorial space to um, commemorate their uh, passed by <clears throat> families and also function functions as a shelter. So that's the idea of how to attract people to uh, to my building. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for me is I'm trying to make the shrine more vibrant and more unique to the environment because the all the environment surrounding my building is more like industrial area. It's kind of like and also it's quite next to the Shenzhen Bay, so it's really actually well connected to well connected to the all around the world. So I wanted to make it more like a shrine spaces for the selling point at this hotel and then people visit this hotel and just go for the shrine or just visit for the shrine for the more like a tourist specific spot. Yeah. Thank you. I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, guys. Very nice to see your full project and, and also your um, reflections on your projects already. I have two brief points, maybe two, three maximum. I would like to go back to the issue of complexity that Simon's initiated, that um, it's um, immense in these two projects. And uh, talking first about Joyce, the first one, um, it's great to see that how using well the analytical tools, you solve a problem um, that would look almost impossible to many designers. No? How can you ventilate a building in such a dense environment? Um, so, incredible, quite a difficult question. I think most of your design time was working with that shape and the CFD, uh, yes. almost the whole time. Yeah. Everything else came um, short. It was in the, 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 the last weeks, really. Yeah. Um, so I would just like to emphasize the amount of time and technical studies and scenarios created, how much was tested to, uh, until we could start seeing results that would make a difference. Um, so you said three generations of families of scenarios and within each one, how many scenarios? Several. Um, isolated solutions, combined solutions. Yeah. So you, you brought a lot from the references. Yeah. How do we create air movement in tall buildings? And you tested lots of, of principles that didn't work yeah. until we start seeing some results. So I think that, that should be emphasized because the, 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 the very in-depth technical knowledge, knowledge of the tools and, and knowing what to test and still how much it had to be done should not be underestimated. Now, it looks like three simulations, but it was actually an immense um, range. So we do need in-depth physics to, to start create, making a difference. And there was a point in your project that you asked, should I do something technically feasible that one would look and say, I can do this tomorrow, or can I explore? And I said, let's explore. And by exploring is what, how you, you found the solution. Maybe otherwise you would not have. So I thought that's, that was great in your design. And just one, one more point that I didn't um, think about it until you and Jean presented. This kind of spaces, dark, semi-underground, protected, uh, will be great refuges, how do you say, protected spaces in the future of climate change. And, yeah. uh, it's great to see already you discovering these spaces in the existing cities. We're probably going to need much more of those. Um, and, and one more point about Jing's project is I, I like very much the way you, I mean, Joyce also followed a bit that process, but you carved to then insert new forms. So I see a... a, a, a would dare even to say, you know, new ways of defining building forms. You start from something very rigid, very clear. Um, you understand the potential of how the circular shapes perform under light. And then you carve and you insert new shapes to adjust the light performance. So I, I think the, um, it's almost like a very fun design exploration, you know, testing, testing this combination of forms I think um, it's a great design process. And I would just like to highlight something maybe you didn't say so much, and if you can 
give us a, uh, a thought on that is the importance of the surfaces. Because the moment you start carving and inserting new, you create relationship between surfaces, not just the forms, the texture of the concrete, the color. And I'm sure you did many tests as well to get to the quality that you wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and Joyce, the same with the air movement. How does it influence their movement, the texture and the roughness? So there is this also level of refinement that I, I, I know there is in your project mm -hmm. um, that adds quality to it. And if you can say something about that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, for me, for the shrine, like, uh, we can see in the rendering they still have uh, at least two different type of uh, uh, concrete. And we can see that uh, in the atrium of the concrete, I'm using a more white color because have a more reflection and also can create more diffuse daylight. And also, but in the below concrete, using the dark uh, color because it's first less reflection and also it will create a visual to make people more focused on the top ceiling, like um, guiding light from the skylight. Yeah, this is the my read material consider about it and also about um, but material and also I added extra prison lens in this so to create some except of the concrete more colorful daylight more dramatic environment in the shrine yeah. okay. I, um, just do a close this I think in, in relation to uh, Jean's uh, appreciation of your projects. Um, if we imagine you, before joining the program, uh, stumbling on the same context and same uh, briefs, you might still have tried to, to go for the form, to optimize the form, as most architects would. But um, you would not have any criteria by which to assess it other than aesthetic. And I think that's your uh, largest, biggest achievement, that uh, you didn't fall into the trap of going backward, you know, to relying on your skills as architects, um, presented with an opportunity to express and manipulate form, but uh, you've respected the rules of the game, our game, based on building physics, and uh, developed it the hard way taking more time, putting more effort, and hopefully there is a higher reward because you can explain how it came to be and what you think it does. And if it doesn't do exactly that, still it's okay. The, the process was the right one. So well done. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.